So it's been a year and a half since we see each other every Sunday. And as I said many times, it's a pleasure, a schus, and a privilege. So this week it's different. Uh, it's not live. And uh, it's not Sunday afternoon. It's rather Wednesday noon. And I usually sit at home. I hope the background today is somewhat more ex- uh, impressive than it usually is. And probably the quality is also better because I'm sitting across a very wonderful young Talmud Chochem that came to see me and came to film this year. So, regardless of what type of technology we're using, it's always a schus and always a pleasure. And the sugya I was asked to address today is really one of the profound and fascinating and interesting sugyas in Hilchah Shabbos, and that is Ribui Bishiurim. In Mesechet Beit Zedav Tesom, it based in the Dapim of the Rif. We find the Machloikis, the Rashbo, and the Ran. Ribu Bishiurim Bishabes, which definitely is a prohibition. There's a difference between Shabbos and Yom Tev. When you do a Malachas Oichal Nefesh in Yom Tev, there is no Issa Ribu Bishiurim. And you don't have to be Makbe to prepare the minimum that is needed. If you're cooking anyway, you might as well cook enough. More than enough. There is no Yisra Ribi Unless you're cooking for a non-Jew. But even when you cook for a non-Jew, and there is a halach, you cannot invite a non-Jew for a Yom Tev meal. Shemo Yar Bebeshviloi. The Rishonim explained the Cheshash is, maybe you cook separately for the non-Jew. But if it's in the same pot, Ribi Shurim is muta and Yom Tev. Shabbos, it definitely is a prohibition. And if someone needs to cook on Shabbos for a choylish yesh boy sakona, he cannot cook more than is required for that choylish yesh boy sakona because the heter is pikuach nefesh. Pikuach nefesh and oichel nefesh are not the same. But there's a big machloik isran and rashbo. Ribui bishiurim, also men a teira or midera baron. Ukedarko shel teira. We would expect this sugya to be discussed in Mesechet Shabbos, which it is not. Mesechet Beya, yes. But one of the most important sources in Menachas, Daf Samach Dalid, Omud Alf. So the Gemoz Mesopik in Menachas, Daf Samach Dalid. <coughs> I apologize, I'm still not well. I feel much better than last week. I no longer have fever, but my cough is still nagging me. So I apologize. So the Gemara says, Sofa Kamanocha Samagdala Domadala. Chodesh Shesh Beskona that needs Shtei Groi Gerois. So we run out to the garden, to the field, and we have a dilemma. There's one branch that has three Gregoris. We only need two. So the doctor said, this Chodesh Yesh Vesekona needs to eat two apples. In the modern world, sounds insane. Why would a Chodesh Yesh Vesekona need two apples and not three apples? You know, today modern medicine is all about medicine. IV, chemotherapy. Once medicine was about food, but Let's talk about the principles, not about the practicalities. So the Chodesh Yesh Bakona needs two apples. We have a dilemma. On the tree, there are two twigs, each has one apple. So we could cut off these two apples. We need to do two ktsiris. There's one twig, one branch, that has three apples. So it's only one ktsira. But it's three apples. We don't need three. We only need two. So the Gemara has a suffolk. What is preferable? Doing two ktsiris, but at the end of the day, we only cut off two apples. And that is exactly what is required. Latzolos nefoshes. Or is it better to do one ktsira, but we cut off three apples? As you could obviously guess, 
the Gemara says, it is better lemait b'ktsira. If you cut off the branch that has three apples, you only did one malacha. And that malacha is totally permissible because pikuach nefesh. If you cut off the two branches, you did two malachas. Why do two malachas if you could get away with one? But on the other hand, the have minute was, but I need two apples. So what would be the heta cutting off three apples? So the Gemara says, Odif lemait bebitzira melemait bishiura. The Ran argues, a very powerful argument. The Ran says, if ribiui bishiura would only be an isa de Rabona, like the Rajba maintains, what would be the shayla bachlal? The most simple and poshita halacha in the context of hakal, hakal tchilo is, it's preferable to be over an Isidar Abonon than an Isidar Isa. Rebu Bishurim is only an Isidar Abonon. So what would be the Havamana to be Marbe Bamalacha or Mamayi Bishiru? This Gemara proves beyond doubt Rebu Bishurim is an Isidar Isa. And that is why we had a question. How would the Rashba answer on this kash? I think that Ashba simply would say, okay, that was the suffix in the Gemara, whether Rebu Shur is an Isidir Aizan is the Rabbanon. And the reason we prefer Lamayid Bektsir is because Rebu Bishur is only an Isidir Rabbanon. Maybe Zegufa, that in itself was the question, was the dilemma we were dealing with. Anyway, the Ashba maintains Rebu Bishur is only an Isidir Rabbanon, according to Danan, it's an Isidir Aizan. So Danan explaining his approach, must differentiate between Oichel Nefesh and Pikuach Nefesh. When we're dealing Pikuach Nefesh in Shabbos, Ribui B'Shi'urim is an Isar Diorais. Oichel Nefesh, it's Mutar. What is the logic to differentiate between Oichel Nefesh and Pikuach Nefesh? Beran has two different approaches. He emphasizes two different points. One is, Many times I think we already touched upon these fundamental hagdoras. Hutro or dechuyo. So pikuach nefesh is dechuyo. And therefore, you must minimize. As much as you could minimize a veda, that is your chiyuv. Hutra, you don't need to make any effort to avoid or prevent what is Hutra. So, Oichal Nefesh, there is no Iseri Bui Bishiurim because it's Hutra. So, when you cook or bake for Yamtev, that is Muta Lechat Chila. Pikuach Nefesh is only the Chuyo. And therefore, regarding Pikuach Nefesh and Shabbos, or even pikuach nefesh and yamtef, if it is something that is not oichel nefesh, rebu vishur would be awesome at the The other explanation of the Ran is, it's not mistavar, shat toire machayeves ledaktik boichel nefesh. Pikuach nefesh is totally coincidental. And it's an extreme case. So when we're dealing with pikuach nefesh, yes, we need to minimize but Oichel Nefesh, a woman cooks, cooks for the family. In the middle of the week, she is not medactic to have the exact portions. Sometimes the food is tastier and more appealing than other times. So we'll eat more, we'll eat less. It's not mistava that when you cook for Yom Tov, you need to strain your mind and know exactly how much you're going to be cooking. So the second expression of the land is a more practical one. Those are the two approaches to be machalak between Oichal Nefesh and Yom Tev, in which there is no Isar of Rebbe Shurim, and Pikuach Nefesh, in which, according to the Ran, Rebbe Shurim is Menatoiro. According to the Rash, it's only Medarabonon. How do we define and explain the difference? I mean, what's the Machlokes Rash for the Ran? My understanding always was that there's a fundamental, maybe philosophical question regarding Malachas Shabbos. Does the malacha relate to every shiur bifnei atzmai? 
when you cook ten grogorois. Shur Malach Shabbos, Ba'uchlin is grogeris. So when you cook a pot and it has ten shiurim, is it as if you cooked every shiur b'fnei atzmo, or it's all the same? It's all the same. It's the same melacha, essentially. According to the Rashba, it's one melacha's bishul. And there's no difference how much food is in the pot. Bishul is bishul. Ner la echod, ner la meya. Same water, same fire, same malacha. The Ran maintains no. The bishul is as if relates bifne atzma le kol shiur vishiur. And therefore it would be a malacha diuraisa. That was my fundamental understanding. How do we understand the Machloikis Rash Bonan, whether Rebbe Bishurim is a Deraisa or a Derabona? So, according to the Rashma, we're dealing with an Isser Derabona. According to the Ran, we're dealing with an Isser Deraisa. And the Ran, in two different ways, explains the difference between Oichan Nefesh and Yom, Temenos Yer is no Isser Rebbe Bishurim, and Shabbos. Coming back to the Rashba, one explanation would be, as I just explained three minutes ago, the Rashba maintains, when you do a Malacha and Shabbos, Minatayra, it's only one Malacha, regardless of the quantity, of the result. When you cook one Groigeris, it's the same as says you're cooking ten Groigeris, because at the end of the day, it is one malacha of bishul. And you perform that malacha either when you put the pot on the fire or when you ignited that fire under the pot. Ben kach u ben kach. It's one malacha. And therefore, minatari, there's no difference how much food is in that pot. Or maybe we would explain the Rashba in a totally different way. Just like the Ran explains why there would be no Issa Ribi Bishurim by Yom Tev, the Rashba would say the same regarding Shabbos. There's room for argument that maybe the Rashba maintains that Pekuach Nefesh is Hutro just like Malach HaZaychel Nefesh is Hutro. And this brings us back to a huge discussion. I apologize, but I don't remember exactly all the sugas we discussed in the past year and a half. At this stage of my life, I give so many shiurim, I apologize, I can never remember what I say, where, and when. I remember what I speak about, but how would I remember what I said, where, and when, when I give hundreds of shiurim in dozens of different places? So I don't recall whether we spoke at length about Pikuach Nefesh. But as a Machloik is the Bish Yosef and the Ramon and so many different points came and it manifests itself in so many different questions. Is Pikuach Nefesh Hutro or Dechuyo? Shabbos Hutro or Dechuyo? The Rambam writes, Beferish Dechuyo. He Shabbos says Pikuach Nefesh. Interesting. <coughs> and Afal Piken. The Ramah and some others say the opinion of the Rambam is Hutro. So maybe the Rashbor argues Shabbos Hutro is a Pekur Nefesh. So Pekur Nefesh would be like Eucham Nefesh. And because the Maloche is a Maloche Muteres, it is totally Mutar, regardless of what's in that pot. This is a Maloche Muteres, because Shabbos Hutro is a Pekur Nefesh. That would be only one alternative explanation regarding Shita Sarashpo. The Nafkemina the would be, and am I safer on Mesechet Shabbos? I dealt with this question. Shabbos Tzadi Gimalo Medbeis. Hamoitzi Yesu Oichanen Bekli. Chayev Afala Kli. So Hamoitzi Yesu Oichanen Bekli. He's chayav al itzuas He's also chayav al itzuas akli. 
What is the nafkemina? If he's amazed, you can't kill him twice. Nafkemina is shaygig. Lagabe korum chetos. Yedias machalkois. Why wouldn't we say, Rebbe Wibishiuri? According to the Rashi, it's only one Aveda. How could he be chayef shteichatois? Wouldn't that be Rebbe Wibishiuri? Same malacha. One hoitzoa. Hoitziyasa oichlem bekli. So if our explanation in the Rashi would be, once it's mutter, it's entirely mutter. Just like the Ram explains Oichel Nefesh, the same would apply to Pikuach Nefesh, then Hoitzis Oichel Nebekli, we're dealing with the Malechus Isur, not with the Malechus Heta. It's not Pikuach Nefesh. We're dealing with an Isur. So if we're dealing with an Isur, then Ashba would agree that the Malechus pertains to each Shiur Befne Atzmo. And in that case, Rebu Bishurim would be Menatoir. According to the first that we explained in the Rashba, that the Machlekes and Rashba essentially is how do we define Malochus Shabbos? Is it as if you perform the Malochus in Kol Shiur, the Shiur Befne at Smo? Or the Shiurim are just a sideshow? It's one Malochus. And Rebu Bishurim doesn't really make a difference. It's the same Malacha. In that case, there would be no difference whether it's a Malacha Sis or a Malacha Zeta. It's one Malacha Yitzchayev, one Chatos. We could still argue, Rebu Bishurim is only if essentially it's a question of Shiurim, but it's the same Chetza. And therefore, a Moitzi Oichlen, we wouldn't say Chayev or Kol Shiur or but Oichlen and Kalem are not the same. They're not of the same essence. And therefore, that would not be defined as Rebui Bishurim, but rather Rebui B'malochois. So, I hope I'm making myself clear. We have two Dark Avon and the Rashba, and there's an Afkam and a Halacha between them. Rebui Bishurim B'malechas Isur. Would the Rashba agree that that's a Deoraisa? Depends on the two approaches that we explain Shittas HaRashba. On the other hand, the Ran that explains Rebu Bishum Biyom Tev Lekuli Alma Mutar, the Ran himself says two different explanations why Yom Tev would be different than Shabbos. Igris Moshe, Chelik Beis, Or Chaim Semakuv Gimel. And the Psak of the Igris Moshe, an additional Psakam I will quote shortly, are based on the assumption that Yom Tev is an Isra Hoitzoa. Shalolet Tzorech, there's an Isra Hoitzoa in Yom Tev. It's a big tumult. But regarding to our present discussion in Aloha, we assume there is an Isra Hoitzoa Hitzoa in Yom Tev. It's only Mitzor Tzorech. So the Moshe says, a person smokes on Yom Tev. I must say, I wrote in my tshuvas, Bizman hazeh, pshitali, it's an isa gomer to smoke on Yom Tev. Only a person that is totally detached from reality would say smoking is shova lachon nefesh. In the modern world, the vast majority of people no longer smoke. They are repulsed by cigarette smoke. How could we say that Shova Lachon Nefesh? And therefore, in our time, I pass in this a thousand times, it's an Isra Dior I said to smoke on Yom Tev. I know that some people listening to me now will feel offended and they will be angry at this Psak. I don't like to make people angry. I don't like to offend people. But I must say, this is my clear halachic opinion. And if I will be zeicher, one person listening to me will stop smoking on Yom Tev, Yizes Chori. If I will be zeicher that one person will entirely stop smoking, I'll see that even as a far greater schus. Because that is Pikuach Nefesh. And I, I am extremely dismayed by the fact that in many yeshivas, Rosh Hashivas do not speak up against smoking. And I'm going to say something very harsh. 
Asidim litem esadim. The Rabbeim that don't speak up against smoking to their Hasidim, the Rabbonim to their congregants, the Rashashivis to their Talmidim, Asidim litem esadim. Because we know today, beyond any doubt, smoking kills people. People die from smoking. But this is not the substance of today's Shia. I just mention it because the question of smoking and Yom Tev. Smoking and Yom Tev is an Isra Deurais because it's not Shovel Achol Nefesh. So the Moshe's wrote a tshuva in a different day and age. 300 years ago, people believed that smoking has gewaldige medical benefits. Yeah, that's what they believed 300 years ago. But today, we know differently. So anyway, Ramosha Paskins, a person usually smokes two or three cigarettes a day. Could he carry a pack of cigarettes that has 20 cigarettes? Would that be Rebubi Shiuri? And Ramosha says, yes, it's Rebubi Shiuri, but one could be a maker because it's Yom Tev. And Yom Tev, if it's Oichel Nefesh, takes this a step further. You have a keychain. And on your keychain, you have many keys. You have your car keys on your keychain. I'm not talking about muktzah. For various reasons, it's not an isra of muktzah. But would it be an isra of carrying mershus rishos? There's no need. You can't use your car keys. Shmei Shabbos Kichosa says, it's a ribu bishiurim. Is that ribu bishiurim? Rabbi Chonon, Koivet Shiurim says, the heter of ribu bishiurim and Yom Tev is only if each shiur is ra'ui. You could eat it. It's just too much. You don't need that much. But it's ra'ui. I do not entirely agree with Rabbi Chonon. When we're dealing with the heter lemaisa in cooking more than you need, it is only permissible if it's all raui. But when we're dealing with the question of a diuraisa, not a derabonon, ribbishurim wouldn't necessarily make a difference whether it's all ra'ui or not ra'ui. It depends on the two different explanations of the ram. If we say, and if it's hutra, it's hutra la gamra. It's hutra even if some of the stuff is not ra'ui. Because it is malechas or nefesh. Some of the stuff is ra'ui. And if it's hutra, it's hutra la gamra. According to the other explanation of the Ran, how much you're cooking. Yes, but if you're cooking something that's not, not fitting for consumption, there's no heter at all. So that is the difference between carrying a packet of cigarettes. Each of them, you could smoke. You just don't need that many. Carrying keys. And some of those keys you cannot use on Yom Tov, like your car keys. According to the second derech of the Ran, that would be an Isur Dioraisa, even on Yom Tev. One of the big controversies is Rebbe Bishur and Bohitzor. The unbelievable tzaddik, the Chofetz Chaim. And what is so great about the Chofetz Chaim and his tzaddikis, the Chofetz Chaim was a sage and a tzaddik Yisrael. But what was unique about the Chofetz Chaim? You know, this week's Pasha, Moshe Rabbeinu turns to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ha'ani horisi esa'am hazeh imonoi chiyeladatiyo she'toy meralai sa'eu b'chakecho kashe yisu hu'oy men esayoyneik. Is this people my people? That I conceive them? That I give birth to them? Are they my children or your children? You expect me to carry them in my lap? 
the Chofetz Chaim carried Kal Yisrael in his lap, Kasha Yisrael Oymen is a Yonik, like Moshe Rabbeinu. And many of the Svorim he wrote, he wrote because he recognized that as Tzorek Hasho. It is what the people need. So one of the unique Svorim he wrote was Machani Yisrael. And that was the time of the Kantonistim, that terrible Gzeda. Young Jewish boys were conscripted, taken to the Russian army by force. I don't want to talk about this period. It was an awful period with destroyed Kehillahs. So the Russian government said, there's a certain quota. Every Jewish town needs to give young boys for military service. And it was up to the Jews to decide who's going to come and who's going to stay home. So it was all based on the number of people in the congregation. A kid of a thousand people need to give ten boys. Ten thousand people needed to give a hundred boys. All relative. All about numbers. What happened was there was an awful corruption. So the rich paid ransom to have their children exempt. The powerful used their power to have their children exempt, and usually it was the poor and the desperate who had their children torn away from their families, ripped from their homes, and sent for 25 years of service in the Russian army. So there's a lot of discussion about that period. But anyway, so the Chavaz Chaim wrote a special Sefer Machni Yisrael to give guidance to those young boys in an alien army that cared nothing about their Ruchni's needs. And it's an amazing Sefer. So one of the Yisraelis, the Chavaz Chaim, writes, So on Shabbos you need to carry arms. You need to carry your weapons. Otherwise, they're going to hang you. If you're carrying anyway, you might as well take along your tefillin and your talis. Because sometimes they left Shabbos. And they're not going to be coming back on Sunday. Or Mitzvah Shabbos. So could you take along your tefillin? So the Chavetz Chaim writes, We could rely on the Rashvot, Rebuy B'Shiur, Mizoni, and Rabbonon, and do it Kalachayad, so it's a Shvuz, the Shvuz. Rebuy B'Shiur, and Rabbonon. You're carrying your weapon anyway, and that's Pikuach Nefesh, so you might as well take along your talents and tefillin. <coughs> but the Mishnah Brun and Shin Yud Ches, Siv Kot Yud Gimel maintains, Halochi Ketiv Re'aram. Rebuy B'Shiur, is the Uray, said, Not at the Rabbonon. Chovetz Chaim says, okay, but B'Sha'as Atchak, after all the Rashbo, Lav Kat Lakan Yebiyagba. So we are Choshesh Lishit Aseran, but B'Sha'as Atchak, we could rely on the Rashbo. So the Minchas Yitzchok, Chele Gimel Semelama, deals with the Eledes. Needs to go in the hospital. So once again, we're not dealing with Tchumim, we're dealing with Muktsu, we're dealing with Moitzim Mishus Lishus. Ribu Bishiurim. You might as well take along food, take along other things that you need. In my opinion, and this is a svara which I did not see by others, but I feel it very strongly. And that would be the third derech to be miyash of the sugi and Shabbos of Tzadik Beis Tzadik Gimel. We discussed that a few minutes ago. And I think it's a Pasha Tesvara. When we're dealing with Kaitza, you're cutting off a twig or a branch. It's the same Malacha. The difference is only in the result. How many apples were on that branch? But the Malacha is exactly the same Malacha. You're taking a knife or a scissors or whatever it is, Cutting the branch, it's one kaitza. The same regarding bishul. You're putting the pot on the fire. You're putting on the fire under the pot. Exactly the same malacha, regardless of how many shurim are, are there in that pot. Haitzo is different. What is malachas haitzo? Malachas meitzo is effort. Carrying. 
When you carry two things, it's more it's worth than carrying one thing. It's not a question of shiurim. I think Malach HaSitzua, everyone would agree. More, more shiurim is more malacha. More shiurim is more malacha. Would there be a difference whether you're carrying two shiurim in one hand? Or one box in this hand, what box in that hand? Whether you carry both boxes together, or one after the other? I think Haitzua definitely relates to kol shiur v'shiur b'fnei atzmo. Kach ne'lani is died. And this brings us to various different questions. A nurse or a doctor that needs to write in a hospital, it's pikuach nefesh. Is there a difference between writing big letters or small letters? You know, sometimes you have somebody that writes tiny little miniature microscopic letters. You need to take your eyes out. Okay, so let me give you a more relevant example. You have the big shasana and the small shasana. You have a small shasana. You cannot read the Rebbe Nochanano. Such tiny little letters. So when you're Koisev and Shabbos, will it make a difference, big letters or small letters? Would that be considered a Yerim? Should we instruct doctors and nurses when you need to write on Shabbos, you're working in a hospital, write small letters and not big letters? I don't think so. Why not? And the Chodesh Eshvaskona needs food on Shabbos. He needs meat. So we need to shecht an animal to cook meat for him. Melech HaSenech says, look for the smallest chicken you could find in the pen and shecht it. Instead of shecht it, you get huge oxen. That's Rebui Bishiurim. I don't think so. Nowhere in the place can do we find. Ashoichet Bishabes, L'choylish Yesh Beisakona, needs to take the smallest animal he finds. Rabbi Meir Simcha writes that by Netilas Nishoma, there is no din of Rabbi Shurim, but he doesn't explain why. Shmi Shabbos Kachos understands the Or Sameach because there is no Shir. Chayev Bekol Shu. I don't agree with this interpretation. So if there is no Shir, that's a Chumra. Would that cause a Kula? So what, is, so what if there's no Shir? Every Kol Shu should be at a Sefer Sisu. If every Shir is... And he said, the Urai said, why wouldn't every culture will be an Isra the Urai? My explanation is this. Erebe Bishiur is only when we're dealing with a shiur of quantity. Kazayas. Groigeres. But we do not find in Aloha a difference between a big letter and a small letter. What's the difference? A letter is a letter. Shteyoisis. Netilis Nishama, there's no difference a big animal or a small animal. So one could say a big fat animal could have a little Nishama. And a little baby could have a big Nishama. Well, it's a nice way to put it. But Netilis Nishama in Shabbos doesn't really mean what we refer to as a Nishama Kedosha. But once again, what's the difference in Netilis Nishama, how big the animal is? Mevasol b'Shabbos is a sheer gregeris. Two gregeris is more than one gregeris. By shoichet there is no sheer of gregeris. It is only when we're dealing with shiurei kamus, with shiurim that are associated with quantity, is there an iser of ribi shiurim. And therefore, there's no difference a big fat animal or a tiny little skinny chicken. Netilis Nishoma is the same as so. There's no difference between writing a big letter and a small letter. There's a difference between writing three letters or two letters. Because she is a Oisius. Gimel Oisius is Rebbe Bishiurim. Gimel Oisius is Rebbe Bamaloch, not Rebbe Bishiurim, because you write these letters one after the other. But big letters is nothing. No difference between big and small letters. Rameh Simcha is right, not the Minchas Chinach. Netilas and Shnum and no difference, big animal or small animal. So the Avon and Ezer writes, if you need to put on a candle for a choyla, 
you need to look for the smallest candle you could find. Chuvas Avni Nezer, Urachaim Samechtes, once again in Egle Tal, Talmud Chavar of the Avni Nezer, Chel Kesir of Urachai, Urachaim Semenyud, Choylech on the Avni Nezer. And he says, putting on a fire, no difference how big, how long the fire will burn. That's not Rebbe Bishyun. I think he's right. Because by Mavar, it's not a Shir Gorgeris. It's not Oichlin. There is no Shir by Mavir. It is only when we're dealing with Shirei Kamut that there's an Israel Shir. So, my friends, in the last 10 minutes, I shared with you two Gavaldi Gechadushim, one Lechumra and one Lekula. Lekula, there is no Isr Ribi Bishiurim. Bein Menatoira, Bein Medarabonon, only Bashiurei Kamut. Grogeris, that's the Gemor Menochaz Dav Samech Dalet. Shir Grogeris. We have two Grogeris, three Grogeris. That's the Isr of Bishur Bishabes, Moise Falashir. Natilas Nishama, Ksivis Oisius, big ones, small ones. Havoras Eish, a big candle that will burn for 10 hours, small candle that will burn for a half hour, no difference. That's not Rebbe Bishu. On the other hand, Hoytzoa Bishabes, Kuli Al Mamoides, and Isadi Uraisa. That is not Rebbe Bishurim, but Rebbe Bemalacha. Because in the essence of Malacha Saitzoa, the Malacha relates to every Shi'ur Befnei Atzmo. So these are svoras that I did not find but but I am very convinced Shadvorim Pshutim Smechem Vemeirim Kach Nelani Asdaiti. So we discuss some of the Chakiris and Yisaitis of Ribu Bishurim. Hope to see you again next Sunday. Call to